In this video, we shall talk about gait disorders. Have you ever think before that can you know what's wrong with your patient by looking to them while walking? Now let's talk about the examination steps. First of all, ask the patient to stand with their feet together while their eyes are open. Swaying, lurching, or any steadiness can indicate cerebellar dysfunction. Then ask the patient to close their eyes, and any unsteadiness indicates sensory ataxia. The second step is by asking the patient to walk for 10 meters, then turning back. Fourth step is by asking the patient to walk on their toes, then walking on their heels. And finally, ask the patient to walk heel to toes. Some abnormalities can be noticed by applying these steps. Now look to this lady while walking with extension of the hip and knee with a plantar flexion. The arm is flexed at the elbow. This indicates a unilateral upper motor neural lesion that occur in stroke, multiple sclerosis, or space occupying lesions. This gait is referred to as hemiplegic gait. Now look to this boy while he is walking. He has a bilateral upper motor neuron lesion and this type of gait can be easily recognized in patients with a spinal cord lesions, hereditary spastic paraplegia or diplegic cerebral palsy. It's called spastic gait or sometimes referred to as a scissors gait. Look to this boy while he is walking. He has a wide base gait. What can cause this type of gait? This type of gait can be caused primarily by proximal myopathy, like a muscular dystrophy or acquired myopathy. It's called waddling gait and sometimes referred to as a duck gait. Now let's watch this patient while walking with foot slapping. He elevates his thighs in order to prevent his feet from getting stuck to the ground, which occurs in bilateral foot drop. Causes could be in the muscles, like in muscular dystrophy, or it could be in the peripheral nerves, like in diabetes, charcot marie tooth, and entrapment of the peroneal nerves. Spinal cord causes could include amyotrophic lattice sclerosis and poliomyelitis. However, the cause could be in the brain, like in multiple sclerosis or cerebral palsy. This gait is called high steppage gait. By looking to this patient, we can easily recognize that he has a short, slow steps, stooped posture, with loss of arm swing which typically occurs in Parkinson's disease, and it is called shuffling gait. Now, let's look to this patient's abnormal gait. He has unsteady gait with veering to the right and left, which occurs in cerebellar dysfunction. Causes could be vascular like in stroke, demyelination like in multiple sclerosis, or hereditary like in spinocerebellar ataxia and it's called ataxic gait.